Look at my kitchen. I mean, I can literally touch both sides of it without extending my arms. Yet, I'm able to knock out really delicious tasting meals and really fast. And I'll tell you why. First of all, the whole place is set up really efficiently. And secondly, it's always in a ready state of alert. Now, if you want to transform your kitchen into a place that's easy to cook in and fun to be in, you don't have to renovate. In fact, you don't even have to spend a penny. It's all about streamlining. So here are my top tips. Number one, designate. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to establish a workstation. So that's a spot in your kitchen where you're comfortable being, and where you can talk to your friends while you slice and dice. And once you've established that area, then you want to entrench it with a solid cutting board. So in my case, I'm really lucky and I have this fabulous old 100-year-old cutting board. But even if you have something just like as flimsy as this, you just put it right down there. You leave it there. You know that that's your space where you want to do your work. Now, if you've got an uneven surface like this, just take a dish towel or a napkin or whatever, dampen it, and then put it underneath your cutting board. And now you've got a solid, permanent command post to do your prep. Relocate. In my kitchen, all of these things are banished to the cupboards. And I'll tell you why. Because in small kitchens, counter space is prime real estate. You need to look around, rethink everything with fresh eyes, and ask yourself, have I used that in the last little while? And if not, move it. Now the flip side of that is if you have an appliance that you use all the time, like my panini maker, keep it out where it's easy to access. Illuminate. In order to see what's going on and not slice off a finger, you want to illuminate your workstation like a stage. So if you have track lighting, focus it on the area where you're cutting. And if you don't have track lighting, and say you're in an area over here, take a fluorescent light and just stick it under the cupboard. Or hang whatever it takes from the ceiling so that you can illuminate the area where you're slicing and dicing. Situate. You want to situate your most used tools and utensils all within arm's reach. So we're talking ladles, spoons, spatulas, whisks, and even your knives. There's one other thing. This little hook, this is like the best five dollars I ever spent because I can hang my towel on it and while I'm slicing and dicing, I can clean my hands without breaking my rhythm for a second. In a perfect world scenario, you want to have your garbage right beside your workstation. So you can throw it out like this, my compost goes in here, and that way once you start cooking, you don't have to leave your station. But unfortunately, in a lot of people's kitchens, their garbage is under the sink, and you know, you grab up all your cuttings and stuff, you have to be like a Cirque du Soleil contortionist to get down there, use your elbow to open it up. Or, in other cases, the garbage is like way across the kitchen. So if that's the case in your kitchen, what you want to do is grab your bin, put it right beside your feet, and use it, and then at the end of the night, put it back where it came from. Eliminate. You know cabinet doors are so last millennium, but if you remove them, you have easy access to all your plates and your glassware, and on top of that, it adds a really nice splash of color to your kitchen. Vibrate. Want to drown out the monotony of your chop, chop, chop? Add some tunage to your kitchen. You know, most kitchens don't have any carpet or upholstery to muffle the sound, so even a cheap pair of bookshelf speakers will add some rock and roll hoochie-coo to the room. And lastly, meditate. Because the kitchen is your space, and you want to own your space. You want to turn it into your happy place, as this certainly is mine. And you know, a happy place means a happy disposition, which is an ingredient that everyone can taste. All these tips and so many more in my new book, Glutton for Pleasure.